Assalamu alaikum guys. So this is Ahmed Mauer again. So part one, uh, hopefully you guys watch the intro and you guys watch the mentality one should cultivate. Once you have the mentality that one should cultivate, then there are things that one must do, right? Actions that one must take. And the first and most important action is what Prophet Muhammad said is that whoever cannot get married should fast. And I will link to that hadith in the description. And there are several different ways that we fast. The most famous way is obviously fasting Ramadan. One month out of the year you fast at sundown till sun up till sundown. Okay? No food, no water. But then there is non-obligatory recommended fasts. Recommended meaning that you don't have to do it, but it's an option that's there if you want to do it. Excuse me. And aside from being one of the best ways to increase your focus and your spirituality it's also one of the best ways to control your nafsi ammara your nafsi ammara means the ordering self the self that orders you to do to not i don't want to say to do bad things the self that orders you to fulfill its own desires it doesn't care the nafs doesn't care how you fulfill those desires if you do it in a in a, in a permissible means or if you do it in the worst means possible right so in any sense, in any case, right, the first type of fasting that Prophet Muhammad mentioned is also the is Salm Dawood. And this is the hardest one. Salm Dawood, it was reported that Prophet Dawood, peace be upon him, David, would fast one day on and one day off his whole life. One day on, one day off. This is the hardest way to do it. This is also the best way to do it if you're experiencing like, if your urges are up here, then you do it, right? And obviously people get tired from fasting a lot. So you take a break from it. But then before before you start feeling urges, you get back into doing it again. And one of the problems with Psalm Dawood is that you can get used to it, but if you stop, it's hard to start again because it's hard for your body to balance out one day on, one day off. But it's extremely, extremely effective. And we're going to make a whole series, inshallah, on fasting and the benefits of fasting in another series. Right now, we're just talking about what to do, right? I'm not going to go into the benefits of fasting. That's another series, right? Second one is fasting the three full moon days. That's in a lunar calendar, the Hijri calendar. The lunar calendar is the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th of every lunar calendar. Those are the three full moon days. You fast it, okay? And why do we fast the three full moon days? What's the effects of the three full moon days? All of that is for another series, right? The, the fasting series. Right now, it's enough to know. Prophet Muhammad said so, and it is a very good way to in, in control yourself. Some people experience an increase in sexual desires during the full moon days. Other people don't. It doesn't matter. It's still a good thing to do, to fast those three days. And the third thing is, and this is probably the easiest one to do regularly, is Prophet Muhammad said to fast on Monday and Thursday. Some people say that it's only Monday. Most of the people say it's, most of the scholars say it's Monday and Thursday. So fasting Monday and Thursday is a very good way to regularly keep your nafs and in check to keep your yourself your desires in check because the most important thing is that you are in control of yourself and not that yourself is in control of you so probably the easiest way to do it is to fast the mondays and thursdays consistently and also when the three full moon days comes to add that there if that's not enough for you then you should probably consider fasting Som Dawood, the one day on and one day off for a month and see how that affects you that's it for the fasting part. We're going to go to part two, inshallah, which is going to be, well, you'll see when part two comes. It's not always in this.